Hello everyone and welcome back to Neptune's Child Tarot. My name is Monique and this is my second tarot channel here on YouTube. Uh, those of you that are new, welcome. You may also want to check out my main tarot channel, Moon Moth Goddess, where I do have a bunch of other pick a card readings posted into playlists for you guys if you do enjoy the content here. Thank you guys so much for your continued love and support on the channel. So a little bit about today's reading. I am actually on vacation right now and I am pre-recording readings for you guys so they can I can just post them right away um, while I'm on vacation and don't have to worry about recording and uploading and all of that stuff where I'm going. So yeah, by the, if you're watching this the day that I upload it and post it publicly, I'm on vacation. <laughs> so um, taking a much needed um, break and rest, a um, little bit of recharging out in nature. So. We are doing something different today. I don't I don't think I've ever done something like this before, but we are actually I was just kind of looking through my decks to see something that would be different and kind of fun. And I'm using the Oracle of the Uni Unicorns Oracle, and I was just kind of thumbing through um the spreads here that they have. Sometimes the Oracle decks that you purchase, they have little spreads here. Um so, we are going to do the Unicorn Horn spread. And it says um, the spiral layout represents the magical unicorn horn and it is designed to help you better understand your purpose, potential, and prosperity. Okay, so we're going to use nine cards. Obviously, because of the space, I don't have space to spread them out this pretty in a unicorn horn um, kind of shape or whatever this little circle is here. So we're going to have to lay them out. Um, in a way that I can get all of them to fit into the camera. But basically, we're pulling nine cards. Um, it goes truth, illusion, fear, wisdom, courage, love, power, faith, and light. And as we go through pulling the cards, and I will let you guys know, you know, what it's going to represent for each one for you. Um, but basically, we're going to be pulling one of the oracles for each little uh, thing here. And then also pulling a tarot card. So we'll talk about each one you know, for each, every little thing that we're going through here. And I'll give you guys just a little look at the book if you want to pause it and kind of look at the things that we're going to be going over. But that is what we're doing today, the Unicorn Horn Spread, to look at purpose, potential, and prosperity. So rather than, you know, shuffling all piles together and stuff like that, because I don't, I don't know how many cards are in this deck, but we're going to do it for each pile separately. We'll shuffle the cards out. But we have three crystals for you to choose from. If you do feel drawn to more than one little crystal here that is perfectly okay for today's reading, do whatever it is your intuition is telling you. But we do have a blue appetite, an amethyst, and also a pink agate. So if you already know which one you feel the most drawn to, the timestamp is down below. Um, but I'm going to give you a closer look at the crystals. Pile one, this is the blue appetite. Okay. For pile number one, blue appetite. Pile number two, we have this amethyst. Okay, amethyst for pile number two. And then pile number three is going to be the pink agate. Okay, so basically, again, this spread is helping us to look at purpose, potential, and prosperity. Okay, for you, there's a lot of really interesting little questions and things that they have in this spread. So I thought it would be fun, something different. Okay, so pile one with the blue appetite, pile two with the amethyst, and then pile number three with the pink agate. Timestamps are down below, and I will see you guys at your reading. Hi, pile one. So like I said, we are going to be pulling nine cards for this spread. I am going to create a timestamp. I'm going to call this part right here pile one prep. So if you want to go straight to the reading, um, I will put a timestamp that'll say pile one reading. But this part right here, we're going to put the little piles together for the nine cards. So if you don't want to wait, don't want to watch the shuffling process, you can click the next timestamp for pile one for the actual reading. So what we're going to do, we're going to look through these questions here. And our first card that we're pulling is truth and it says your soul gifts and purpose in this lifetime two says the illusion elements that limit you from reaching your divine potential 
Three, fear, an area you have resistance to or a reluctance to face, elevating higher into your power. I'm sorry. Card number four, wisdom, what you need to learn, heal, and release before elevating higher into your power, joy, and prosperity. And then five, courage, overcome this obstacle in order to move forward. Love for six, the support required to transcend obstacles or limitations on your journey. Seven says power, the emotions or mindset you need to embody in order to rise higher. Number eight says faith, your next step towards success. Number nine says light, and it says the result of fully owning your magic, using your soul gifts and fulfilling your highest potential. Okay, so nine cards in total. Like I said, if you, I'm going to keep this over here so that I can pull these cards and pay attention to what I'm pulling here. So we're going to pull one Oracle, one tarot card for each of the cards. So the first card that we're pulling says your soul gifts and purpose in this lifetime. Okay. So pile one, what are your soul gifts and purpose in this lifetime? So that is the first one, <clears throat> your soul gifts and purpose in this lifetime for pile number one, soul gifts and purpose in this lifetime. Okay. So the second little pile we're doing is the illusion. Okay, so what are the elements that limit you from reaching your divine potential? What are the elements that limit you from reaching your divine potential? Okay, and then let's pull one of these tarot. What are the elements that limit you from reaching your divine potential? Okay, the third one says fear. An area you have resistance to or a reluctance to face. What is an area you have resistance to or a reluctance to face? That is the third one. What is an area you have resistance to or a reluctance to face? Okay. And then number four says wisdom, what you need to learn, heal, or release before elevating higher into your power, joy, and prosperity. And let's pull a tarot. What you need to learn, heal, or release before elevating higher into your power, joy, and prosperity. Okay, so five says courage overcome this obstacle in order to move forward so what obstacle do you need to overcome in order to move forward let's let's see okay that is your obstacle you need to overcome let's look at the tarot okay and then number Six says love, the support that is required to transcend obstacles or limitations on your journey. The support required to transcend obstacles or limitations on your journey. Support required. Support required to transcend obstacles or limitations on your journey. Okay, and then the next one is power, number seven. The emotions or mindset you need to embody in order to rise higher. What are the emotions or mindset you need to embody in order to rise higher? Okay. What are the emotions or mindset you need to embody in order to rise higher? And then number eight says, faith, your next step towards success. Your next step towards success, pile number one. And then the tarot. Your next step towards success, pile one. Okay, now our last card, final card, is light. 
the result of fully owning your magic, using your soul gifts, and fulfilling your highest potential. The result of fully owning your magic, using your soul gifts, and fulfilling your highest potential. Okay, so I'm going to put this over here. Let's pull one tarot. The result of fully owning your magic, using your soul gifts, and fulfilling your highest potential. Let's see. Okay. So now we're just going to take a second to give a timestamp for the people who didn't want to watch this process and, um, and see. Okay, so let's see. Let's move these down. Okay, pile one. So we are all set with all of the nine cards that we're pulling for your reading today, looking into uh, purpose, potential, prosperity. Okay, in this position here, we have card one, truth, and it says your soul gifts and purpose in this lifetime. So let's see what this is. Goddess. Wow. It says honor your divine feminine energy. See your inner beauty. Love every part of you. Okay, and then we have the acrobat here, which says the page of stones, which is the page of pentacles. Okay, so your soul gifts and your purpose in this lifetime. Now, looking at this energy here, we have divine feminine energy. See your inner beauty, right? Which is about you learning to love yourself, appreciate yourself, um, honor yourself, respect yourself, love yourself, feel good about yourself, about your body, about you, the way that you view yourself, right? Love every part of you. Yeah. So this is, you know, everything. This could be you working on your self-esteem, your self-worth, your confidence, um, regardless of your gender, you know, we all have a feminine and masculine energy from within the self. So this is you embodying the energy of a goddess, finding that goddess within it, with inside the self, connecting with your true feminine nature. And the energy of the feminine, as far as your soul gifts and your purpose, a lot of this centered around the feminine energy is manifestation. Okay. Um, beauty, love, nurturing, uh, self-love, uh, creativity, prosperity, which is beautiful. And then you have the page of pentacles energy here, which the page of pentacles is about creative projects, ideas, planting the seed for something new. So I feel like for many of you using your soul gifts and your purpose is to create is to manifest, okay, which is a beautiful uh, energy here. So let's look at position number two, card two, and this is the illusion. This is the element that limits you from reaching your divine potential. So let's see what's limiting you. Action, okay. So that basically is like, maybe there's a lack of action, okay, um, needing to get things done, okay. So it says now is the perfect time to act. Take inspired action towards your dreams. Move forward with confidence, right? So maybe some of you lack the confidence, you know, and are afraid to take action here. So the tarot says the Ace of Swords, okay? So the Ace of Swords is a card of clarity, of truth, of, you know, um, seeing truth in through illusion or, you know, having some type of a mental breakthrough, I was going to say mental breakdown, but sometimes it's through those mental breakdowns where we have some type of epiphany or some type of realization. Um, but I'm seeing, look at how we have this crow here serving as a messenger. It looks like he was kind of like dancing, creating with his little feet here, making all of these little symbols for you to decipher with his little feet here. Um, but we also have these two little keys here. So it kind of reminds me of the high priestess too and the hierophant about knowledge and wisdom and accessing this knowledge. So maybe if some of you are your, your weakness here or the, the limit, the illusion is the illusion surrounding your intuition, not being able to trust yourself. So not trusting yourself. And as a result of that, you don't take action. Okay. So that is something here that spirit is saying is limiting you. Okay. So the third card here says fear, an area, what does it say? An area you have resistance to or a reluctance to face okay a reluctance to face whatever this is let's see anger oh boy <laughs> we have safely express your anger use anger as your positive force honor all of your emotions as sacred okay 
So maybe some of you that have anger from within inside of the self that you maybe you're somebody who's a people pleaser or you're somebody who, you know, gets triggered easily, gets, you know, angry, um, lets yourself or lets that anger kind of take over and take control. Right. So this is spirit saying here, safely express your anger, right? Use anger as a positive in a way that you're letting someone know or voicing that you're upset and angry. You know, sometimes we rage and we can kind of let that go out of control to create a lot of very disruptive energy or chaotic energy in our life. So more or less, this is about you facing what things make you angry, facing what things trigger you to be able to kind of process those feelings there as well. Okay. We also have the Four of Swords energy here. <laughs> so the Four of Swords is, you know, a need for rest, a need for calming the mind, a need for peace, a need for tranquility, a need for uh, creating periods of rest or meditation, you know, and it may be that sometimes maybe meditation is something that can really help you with the anger to kind of face, okay, why am I upset right now? Why do I feel pissed off? Why am I feeling, you know, these, these feelings here? So I feel like honoring that part, right? Because some of you may suppress stuff, you know? You could have somebody who makes you mad and then you don't say anything. They make you upset or a family member, a partner, uh, a coworker, you know? And you feel really angry and you're bottling all of that stuff up inside. And guess what? It's going to come out eventually. And sometimes when we let it in come out, it's not in a good way, Right? So maybe it's facing what things make you upset and honoring those feelings as well. But like Spirit is saying here, use the anger in a positive, positive way. Okay, so the next one is wisdom. And it says what you need to learn, heal or release before elevating higher into your power, joy and prosperity. So what do you need to learn? Let's see. Innocence. And it says take time to play, nurture your inner child live with a childlike sense of wonder. Okay, so maybe this could be healing the inner child, um, releasing uh, any feelings, emotions that are tied or connected into the inner child that need attention. Okay, it can also be learning how to connect back into the inner child at times so that you are able to view the world through that childlike sense of wonder, right? Without the fears, without the insecurities, and just kind of tap into that energy. And then we have the Phoenix here, which really to me is ju the judgment card. This is about letting go. This is about forgiveness. Okay. So for many of you, this could be something that you're needing to heal, right? Is the things from your past, the baggage that you're carrying, you know, in order for you to transform and grow and evolve into this higher version of self, which I love. This is a perfect card um, with judgment. So it's asking you to you know, what did you learn from your past? What has it taught you? Take the lessons with you, take the love with you and move forward, releasing, letting go, healing, releasing anger, releasing resentment, releasing all of the emotional baggage in a sense that you're carrying, pile one. Okay, so we have number five here and this is, it says courage and it says overcome this obstacle in order to move forward. Polarity. Okay, so it says integrate your shadow side. There can be no light without dark. Understand the law of polarity. Okay, so this is the obstacle that you have to overcome, which is about finding that balance with inside of yourself, your dark and your light. We all have it, right? We all have a shadow. We all have the light energies. So it's overcoming this obstacle. And that obstacle could be living too much in the light energy, right? Everything's perfect. Everything's rainbows and butterflies and, and it's not addressing the shadow, right? Toxic positivity, or we can be completely Debbie Downer and toxic, right? The dark, the shadow and living from that vibration as well, which can also create an imbalance, right? So this is understanding that we have to integrate both of these parts of self, Right. And that could be an obstacle. Right. Facing all of those shadows or facing or changing perspective to see how we can let the light in. OK, whatever that means for you. So, yes, integrate your shadow side is what spirit is saying here. OK, and then we have the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Swords is a card of clarity and truth and 
um, honesty and vision and um, being able to make decisions. It's moving into a place of higher consciousness. Okay. So to me, this is you being in control of your thoughts and your mind and, you know, seeing through illusion, you know, that sometimes, yes, the shadow can bring. Okay. But it's in a very powerful uh, place there. Okay. So where are we at? Five. Number six here is love. And it says the support that is required to transcend obstacles or limitations on your journey. Okay. The support required. Freedom. And it says live wild and free. Choose your freedom. Claim your independence. Okay. Um, and then we have the Ten of Pentacles. Okay. So this is talking about love. It says the support required to transcend obstacles or limitations on your journey. So with support, we have the Ten of Pentacles here. And freedom. So the Ten of Pentacles is a family card. It's a card of wealth, a card of abundance, but it's also those people that are close to us, our loved ones, our friends, our family. So, and this can also be talking about generational, ancestral in a way. So I'm feeling that many of you, as far as love, the support required to transcend obstacles or limitations on your journey, maybe even for some of you, it's, it's freeing yourself from familiar pattern, familial patterns or generational traumas or, you know, surrounding yourself with people who are supportive that make you and allow you to feel free to be your own person, right? Versus kind of conforming to what this person says or that person says or that person's opinion. So <clears throat> the Ten of Pentacles is a very strong, stable, beautiful energy, but this is also spirit wanting you to kind of in a way Claim your independence, right? And maybe that is something for many of you to learn, especially when it comes to love and family, is that you may need to set some boundaries. Maybe there is certain family members that you need to kind of love from afar, you know, and kind of be independent of that um, type of energy. So four or five, six. Okay, so number seven says the emotions or mindset you need to embody in order to rise higher. This is about your power here. Okay. So the emotions or the mindset you need to embody in order to rise higher your intuition. <laughs> okay. It says, listen to the whispers of your heart. Use divination tools to help you decide. Those of you that like to read tarot, oracle cards, um, which some of you that, that don't know how to read tarot, oracle cards may be, be a good way to start because you don't need to kind of interpret all of these things, but oracle cards can be very useful as well. Okay, so, or you can get a reading, right? You can get a reading from someone. Um, but yes, we have intuition here. The emotions or the mindset you need to embody is learning to trust. I feel like your intuition, right? Trust your intuition no matter what it says. And then we have the five of wands here. Wow. So this is the energy that you need to uh, embody. The emotions or the mindset you need to embody in order to rise higher. So the five of wands is about change. It can also be about conflict. And if you look at this dragon here, it's kind of like putting out these little fireballs here. So the five of wands is also a very competitive energy, which means like you're, you're, I'm, I'm kind of seeing this in a way like fighting. Some of you could be fighting your intuition, but maybe this is also symbolic for some of you of a competitive spirit, a fighting spirit, you know? that you're allowing your intuition to, to take the lead in a sense, right? But this can be with the five of wands. It can also be, yes, very competitive spirit. It's like putting forth a lot of your energy action, right? Towards what your intuition is leading or guiding uh, for you. Okay. And then we have number eight here, your faith. And it says your next step towards success. So let's see. Dance. Wow. It says, move your body to music. Dance with the rhythm of life. Manifest your dreams through dance. Why dance? Because dance is something that helps us to get the body and the energy moving, right? So those days when you feel kind of not so great, you feel maybe tired or fatigued or drained, or you feel like stressed out, dancing, moving, exercising, can be something that helps to release all of that negative energy, right? 
So this can be literally just kind of like going into room and just like shaking, shaking, right? Which may seem silly, but it really helps, okay? So move your body to music, those of you that like to dance. Um, music is also something, right, that really helps to tra with transmuting energy here as well, okay? But this is spirit saying here, faith, your next step towards success, dance with the rhythm of life, manifesting your dreams through dance, which means that while you're dancing and you're shifting and you're happy and you're just kind of moving through the motions, you could be setting intentions during that process, okay? Visioning, we have the Six of Swords energy here. Your next step towards success, the Six of Swords. The Six of Swords is about moving into a more calming, peaceful place of your life. If that means you're removing certain people away, you're distancing yourself, you're moving away from chaotic energy, right? So if we want success and coming into alignment with that success, this is removing anything out of our life or moving away from things, okay, that are not really serving your highest good. Okay, it's helping with a transition here. So the final card that we have here, card number nine is light. And it says the result of fully owning your magic, using your soul gifts and fulfilling your highest potential strength. Okay, it says this challenge will make you stronger. You will get through to the other side. Look for the gifts in this situation. So you have an incredible amount of strength within yourself, within your soul, being in your power here, okay? And we have the Four of Wands. You can't get better than that. The Four of Wands is a beautiful energy. It is an energy of stability, security, celebration, joy, happiness, family, friends, um, you know, parties, events. You're celebrating something beautiful and amazing. It's a very beautiful, stable, celebratory energy. Some of you quite literally... You know, it could be you buying your beautiful little house, unique as it is. I don't know. We're seeing a little house in the woods here that's so sweet. It looks like a little hobbit house or fairy house or something here. But this is beautiful, right? We have strength, your strength within inside of yourself by you fully owning your magic, using your soul gifts, and fulfilling your highest potential is stability. And it's a beautiful celebratory energy for you. Pile number one. I hope you guys enjoyed this little spread. I thought it would be something fun. Um, if you chose a different pile, I will see you there. But other than that, I will see you guys in the next reading. Hi, pile two. So pile two, I'm going to call this timestamp pile two, uh, prep. So what we're going to be basically doing is putting the nine little piles together. Um, one Oracle card and one tarot card, and we're going to do nine of them. So if you don't want to watch this process, you can click the next timestamp, which says pile two reading. Okay. If you don't want to watch this, but those of you that are staying for this process, we're basically going to be going down the line. And here is, if you want to pause to see, but that is what we're going to be pulling one card for each one for this unicorn spread to help us understand purpose, potential, and prosperity. Okay. So that's what I'm going to be pulling here. So we're going to get started. We're going to pull for the first uh, card here, which says truth. Um, and it says your soul gifts and purpose in this lifetime. Okay, so let's get an oracle for that. Your purpose and soul gifts in this lifetime. What is pal two's purpose and soul gifts in this lifetime? There is that one. And now let's pull a tarot here. What is pal two's? soul gifts and purpose in this lifetime okay so that is our first one now the second one says illusion elements that limit you from reaching your divine potential what are the elements that limit you from reaching your divine potential okay elements that limit pile number two from reaching their divine potential elements that are limiting pile two from reaching their divine potential okay number three card is fear and it says an area that you have resistance to or a reluctance to face okay so pile two what is an area that you have resistance to or a reluctance to face and then let's pull a tarot 
an area they have resistance to or a reluctance to face for pile number two. All right, the fourth one, wisdom. What you need to learn, heal, or release before elevating higher into your power, joy, and prosperity. What does pile two need to learn, heal, or release before elevating higher into their power, joy, and prosperity? What does pile two need to learn, heal, or release before elevating higher? Okay, the fifth card, courage. It says overcome this obstacle in order to move forward. So what obstacle does pile two need to overcome in order to move forward? And let's get the tarot. What obstacle do they need to overcome in order to move forward? Okay, so number six says love. The support that is required to transcend obstacles or limitations on your journey. The support required to transcend. Let's do a tarot. The support that is required to transcend obstacles or limitations on your journey. Okay, now number eight, right? Four, five, six, no, seven. Power. It says the emotions or the mindset you need to embody in order to rise higher. The emotions or the mindset pile two needs to embody in order to rise higher. The emotions or mindset pile two needs to embody in order to rise higher. Okay, and then number eight says faith. Your next step. Your next step towards success. Your next step towards success, pile two. What is pile two's next step towards success? Okay, and then the final card that we're asking about is light. And it says the result of fully owning your magic, using your soul gifts, and fulfilling your highest potential. Okay, so what is the result of fully owning your magic, using your soul gifts, and fulfilling your highest potential? Pile two. Okay, and then one tarot. The result of fully owning your magic, using your soul gifts, and fulfilling your highest potential. Okay, so we're all set with the cards now. And we're going to do a little time step for Pile 2 people who did not want to watch this shuffling process. But Pile 2, these are your cards. We're going to go through each one and we're going to talk about um, each of the positions that these cards hold. So for your first little message here, this is truth and it says your soul gifts and purpose in this lifetime. So let's see. Patience. It says, pause before you take action. Trust that divine timing is at work. Be patient and play whilst you wait. And then we have the two of spirals here, which is the two of wands. Okay. So your soul gifts and purpose in this lifetime. The two of wands is about planning. And it is about making choices, decisions, and I feel for many of you with the patience here, this is the pause before action, which is really what this is, is the pause, right? We're deciding what path we want to take. So maybe for some of you, you know, it is something that you're learning, right? Your purpose, why your soul came here, what your soul came here to learn, right? Is how to tune into, and I'm feeling with trust that divine timing is at work, right? Learning how to work with divine timing, being patient, right? The pause before action, which to me is also, I'm kind of seeing how this unicorn's horn is kind of lighting up here. And there's also the sky that is kind of lighting up. So maybe for some of you, it is tapping into your intuition, you know, and knowing when is time to take action, you know, relying upon that, I feel like as well, which could be part of what your soul gifts are is tuning into your higher self, your intuition here, you know, connecting in with, you know, your star beings or whatever it is that you connect with, spirit, God, universe, okay? 
trusting in divine timing could be right what what your your gift is your your learning here I feel like as well being patient and <laughs> being patient which is not easy right it's it's hard sometimes for us to learn to be patient and to trust in divine timing as far as what your purpose is but I'm definitely feeling looking at this unicorn's horn glowing up um that your soul gifts here are you being you know learning when to trust your intuition which you should trust all the time you should always trust your intuition you know if it's any kind of fear-based thinking things of that nature then we can know that's not intuition that's the ego okay so i'm feeling your soul gifts are that you are someone who is very intuitive okay and this is knowing when to act when to make choices decisions knowing which path to choose okay so in the second position here, we have illusion and it says element that limit you from reaching your divine potential. So let's see what that is. Pile two. Innocence. And it says take time to play, nurture your inner child, uh, live with a childlike sense of wonder. Okay, so this is something that's limiting you from reaching your divine potential. Maybe for some of you, you're disconnected from your inner child or there's a wounded inner child that needs attention, that needs healing. It can also be um, learning how to connect in with your inner child, right? Your inner child is one that is very creative, very inspired and wanting to create, wanting to express itself through you, right? And sometimes when we get so serious about life and about problems and issues, we become very disconnected from our inner child. Right. And we get creative blocks and, you know, we feel uninspired and unmotivated. Right. And our inner child is just like screaming at us, like, let me paint, let me draw, let me write, let me, you know, do this thing that I love. Let me work on this hobby. You know, so many of you that could be something that's limiting you is not connecting in with your inner child or needing to address any inner childhood wounds. OK. And then we have the look at that. I love that. The Ace of Spirals here, which is the Ace of Wands. The Ace of Wands is a spark of creativity, a spark of inspiration, something that has potential, right? So maybe this is for you to see potential in the divine ideas, the divine inspiration that spirit does bring to you, for you, okay? So in the position number three, we have fear, and it says an area that you have resistance or reluctance to face. Intuition, <laughs> okay, so it says, listen to the whispers of your heart. Use divination tools to help you decide. Trust your intuition no matter what. Trust your intuition no matter what. And I know some of you that is hitting hard because our intuition can come in with some news, with some messages, with some insight. And it's just like we completely push it away. Right? Our ego is saying, but no, I want this or I want that. And we find ourselves in situations that didn't lead and we're like, dang it. I knew I should have listened to my intuition, <laughs> right? And then we have the seven of spirals. Look how this bear is hiding in this cave here. The seven of wands is a need for facing adversity and challenges, but in a way that you stand your ground and you persevere. So even when we have and are met with those challenges within life, Sometimes we, we approach one roadblock and we're like, that's it. Forget it. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm tired. Don't want to do it. I'm tired of this. Forget it. I give up, right? The seven of wands is about you trusting where your intuition is leading you. Sometimes the intuition can be steering us forward, but yes, there are blockages that are there, right? But it's not about us giving up at that first sign of issue or problem, or even if we're in a place in life where we have problem after problem after problem, that we're facing the seven of wands it to me in a way <clears throat> you're finding solutions you're you're kind of like finding ways around it right look at how this bear is like hiding itself in the cave and then you know kind of looking out at the at what's out there you know so it's kind of like monitoring your your energy and where you're directing it towards but i'm also feeling for some of you it's a need for learning how to stand in your power to stand your ground um, things of that nature. Okay. So let's see what's in the fourth position, which is wisdom. And it says what you need to learn, heal or release.
before elevating higher into your power, joy, and prosperity. So what is it that you need to learn, heal, and release? Trust. It says leap into the unknown, have faith, and move forward. Believe you will fly. Okay. So what is this again? Number four. Um, what you need to learn is how to trust. What you need to learn, how to trust. Okay. This is about taking risks. Have faith and move forward. Okay. That's what I'm seeing as, as something you need to learn here. Um, maybe if you have issues trusting, maybe there's something that you need to heal with inside of yourself. Okay. If any ever, ever any time that you feel like there's some type of choice or something that you have to make, but you lack trust, you lose faith, you lose hope, something that needs to be healed within you. Okay. We have the divine child, which is the Hierophant. Okay. So the Hierophant does, in this case, I feel like for this spread is representing spiritual knowledge, higher learning, wisdom that is gained through experiences. Okay. So it's learning. Look at how this little baby here is sitting inside this little shell, playing with the paints, right? Learning about them, the textures, the colors. And there's this beautiful butterflies that are kind of around um, the child as well. Okay. So this can be something that you're meant to learn to heal. And because you had the inner child come out here, I'm feeling that this is something that as far as the healing here, because I am seeing a little baby here. Okay, so maybe for some of you, there is something within your inner child that you are needing to heal, maybe even certain beliefs, because the Hierophant is also about beliefs, morals, values, um, which can sometimes be very rigid, they can be very limiting, depending on what type of belief systems we hold. Okay, so that may be something that you're needing to work on healing and releasing there as well. So the fifth card here says courage, and it says overcome this obstacle in order to move forward. So let's see what your obstacle is. Compassion. Okay, it says be gentle with yourself. Forgiveness will set you free. See the light in yourself and others. Okay, so forgiveness will set you free. That's that's huge. Because this can talk about you needing to release um, certain things that you're holding on to. Right? Certain people that have hurt you and we're still holding on to anger or resentment or pain or grudges from the past. Right? So it's nurturing yourself and being compassionate with yourself towards yourself, but also forgiving others. You know, moving into an energy of forgiveness. It doesn't mean that you have to forget about what some things that someone's done to you. You know, I, I can relate to this in a way that I've gone through some very traumatic things in my childhood to the point where I felt completely disgusted, upset, angry, mad. And I got, you know, to that point where I was just like, F this person. You know, I'm never going to talk to this person again. I can't believe this person did to me. And just holding so much energy of hatred towards a person and anger and not wanting to, you know, forgive. And all that did to me was keep me in a place where I was blocked tremendously blocked throughout the majority of my life, you guys. I am going to be 46 years old this year, and I didn't finally learn to let go of things until I was like just about 40 years old, over 40 years old, where I was still harboring things and really learning that the only person that was hurting by holding on to this was me, right? It was me. That was keeping myself stuck in that place by holding on to all of this stuff. So forgiveness will set you free. And I can tell you, it does. Okay. It's not an easy process to get there. It's not something that just happens overnight. It's not asking you to forget about your feelings of what you have. But when we can move into that place of recognizing another soul, you know, and they're going through their own soul's path their own issues, their own problems that they have. And we, our soul comes across that person and we go through certain experiences with them, what can be traumatic and painful and horrible and awful, right? At times, but we need to work towards releasing ourselves from those things, from those things that are kind of weighing us down. Okay. So forgiveness definitely goes a long way of helping your spirit to feel a whole lot lighter. Okay, a whole lot lighter. 
we have the four, yes, look at that, yeah, the four of pentacles. The four of pentacles is attachment. It is clinging on to stuff, right? Look at how this chest is sitting right in the middle of this path, right? So think of this box symbolically is all of your stuff that you've packed in there as a blockage along your path where spirit's saying you are not going any further along your path because this card here is talking about you need to overcome this obstacle in order to move forward and that makes perfect sense we have this chest full of your stuff that you're holding on to that spirit says you look through the box you sort through it what can you let go of right how much stuff are you carrying with you from your past that you need to take out of the box and move this out of the way so that you can keep going on your path Okay, the four of pentacles is staying in the comfort zone. It is clinging on to stuff. It is attachment. It is fear. It is fear of taking a risk. Um, all of these things that you're keeping inside of that little chest there. Okay, so in, let's see, four, five, number six here, we have love. And it says the support required to transcend obstacles or limitations on your journey. Okay, so what is the support that you require? awareness and maybe that is self-awareness for you okay it says live in the moment be conscious of your thoughts look for signs and guidance okay so the support that's required here is maybe you are being more self-aware maybe it is you uh having the support of your spirit team right or listening to right looking for the signs and the guidance that is there your, your spirit guides and ancestors are there giving you, offering you that support, right? Always. Um, we always have the opportunity to ask our spirit guides to step in to assist us, to help us, to see something that we're not seeing or to help us through a difficult time in our life. We have to ask though, okay? So let's see what else. We have the page of swords, the page of scrolls as far as what support is required. So the support, because the Page of Swords is very much the student. It is learning and knowledge and gathering information and researching and being curious. So in a way, look at how she's got this little um, wand here and she looks like she's carrying a little lantern here. So maybe for some of you, it's um, connecting with someone who's going to teach you, right? That could be a mentor. It could be a counselor. It can be a teacher. It could be a therapist. It can be a friend that can offer you some type of insight or different ways of looking at things. Okay. Maybe someone who gives you some type of awareness of your own patterns of behavior or someone who notices certain things or the way that you react or respond to certain instances that you kind of go through here. So maybe it is working with studying, learning, right? Maybe even working with self-help books or getting professional help where needed. Okay. So four, five, six, number seven is power. And it says the emotions or the mindset that you need to embody in order to rise higher. Okay. The emotions or the mindset that you need to embody gentleness. It says, be kind to yourself and others, honor your gentleness, speak words of love. Okay, speak words of love. It's very easy for us to be judgmental and to say mean things about another person or to direct a lot of negative energy or thoughts or words towards another person. So this is spirit saying here, this is the emotion, the mindset that you need to embody in order for you to rise higher. Why? Because this energy here is higher vibrational, right? When we're thinking just nasty, negative, like wishing bad on people and regardless of what they've done. Okay. I get it. I understand some of you guys have gone through some really painful stuff. So have I, so have I, so have all of us, right? We all, none of our lives are perfect. We've all been met with challenge, but really about what you speak and the vibrations that you're putting out there says everything about your vibrational space, right? And where you're at on a vibrational level. So this is very much something that spirit's saying in order for you to rise higher into a higher vibration, into that place of purpose, potential and prosperity, we have to embody this energy here of gentleness. We also have the Ace of Pentacles here. And this Ace of Pentacles looks beautiful. It's like this strong, solid little stone standing here in the sun on top of this little grassy little he uh, hill here. The Ace of Pentacles is new beginnings, new opportunities. So maybe this is the mindset that you need to embody here is 
you can create, you can manifest new beginnings or take advantage of opportunities that are there for new starts or invest into something new, right? Or changing the mindset in terms of seeing that there is opportunity always surrounding you, okay? So number eight here is the faith and it says your next step towards success. Action, okay? So taking action. It says now is the perfect time to act Take inspired action towards your dreams. Move forward with confidence. And we have the sun. It's beautiful. Beautiful energy. The sun is another card of confidence. It is power. It is bliss. It is happiness. It is um, achievements coming full circle. Um, the sun is a very beautiful, beautiful energy. I'm also noticing that this sun here has a little tear in its eye. So maybe for some of you, it's releasing, okay? releasing certain things here as well. So your next step towards success, confidence, action, power. The sun is also masculine energy, which is action, okay? So maybe some of you are tapping into your masculine energy and keeping yourself focused, disciplined, organized, um, and taking decisive action. So the last card here, last position says the result of you fully owning your magic, using your soul gifts and fulfilling your highest potential. What is the result? intention and it says be clear and decisive focus on what you really want be bold with your requests to the universe and then we have the six of wands i love this the six of wands is a card of achievement success victory and accomplishment okay so your full your the result of you fully owning your magic using your soul gifts and fulfilling your highest potential is you set the intention you get it Set the intention, focus on, be clear about what it is that you want, what it is that you're manifesting here, and you will receive it. This is putting you in a position of you stepping into your power that you are creating, co-creating your reality, that when you focus on healing and clearing and doing these things, that you're going to move into a, look at how big this unicorn's wings are, first off. Okay, so it's like, Whatever you choose to manifest by you stepping into your power, whatever you choose to manifest and focus your intention on, you're going to be successful at it. The six of wands is a powerful energy of achievement. Okay, it's also Leo energy. Leo energy, we've got the sun there with Leo energy, confidence, action, and look at how big your wings are, pile two, right? This is you reaching to elevating to these higher heights and manifesting your dreams and making them, creating them reality, setting the intention, you get what it is that you've asked for, right? With ease, you're more in the flow of getting your manifestations, bringing them into alignment, okay? So that is all that I have for you, pile number two. If you did choose a different pile, I will see you there. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little, uh, little pick a card done differently, okay? And I will see you guys in the next reading. Hi, pile three. So I am going to, the way that I've had to, to kind of do this reading, because we are going to be pulling nine cards, I am going to call this little first part here, as we're drawing the cards out, I'm going to call it pile three prep, which is going to be pulling the oracle and the tarot and putting out all of the cards, okay, face down. If you don't want to watch this process, you can click the next timestamp, which says pile three reading. And that'll take you directly to the reading so you don't have to watch this process. But those of you that like to watch it, these are the cards that we're going to be pulling from uh, the Oracle of the Unicorns and using the Chrysalis Tarot. But this is the questions we're going to be pulling for. If you guys want to pause and kind of take a peek at this, nine cards, okay? These are the questions that I'm going to be pulling for. One card, one Oracle card, and one uh, Tarot card. So let's get started. Like I said, if you don't want to watch this process, you can click the next timestamp, which is pile three reading. But we're going to put these cards together. We're going to choose a card for the first position in this little unicorn horn spread. And the first card is about your soul gifts and your purpose in this lifetime. Okay, your soul gifts and your purpose in this lifetime. So let's pull a card for that. Your soul gifts and your purpose in this lifetime for pile three spirit, pile three. What is pile three soul gifts and purpose in this lifetime? So there is the tarot, I'm sorry, the oracle. 
what is pal three's soul gifts and purpose in this lifetime okay so the second one is illusion and it says elements that limit you from reaching your divine potential what are the elements that are limiting you from reaching your divine potential and let's pull a tarot what are the elements that are limiting you from reaching your divine potential okay so third position we have fear and it says an area you have resistance to or a reluctance to face okay an area that you have resistance to or a reluctance to face and let's pull a tarot card what is an area that you have resistance to or a reluctance to face okay so the fourth one says wisdom what you need to learn, heal, and release before elevating higher into your power, joy, and prosperity. So what do you need to learn, heal, and release before elevating higher? Okay, and let's pull a tarot. What do you need to learn, heal, and release before elevating higher into your power, joy, and prosperity? Okay, now the fifth one is about courage and it says overcome this obstacle in order to move forward overcome this obstacle in order to move forward what is your obstacle let's pull the tarot what is the obstacle that pile number three needs to overcome in order to move forward that is your obstacle okay and then number six is love and it says the support required to transcend your obstacles and limitations on your journey okay the support required to transcend obstacles and then let's pull your tarot what is the support required to transcend obstacles or limitations? And we're going to do four, six. Okay, so seven is power. And this is the emotions or the mindset that you need to embody in order to rise higher. Okay, rise higher. Let's do this one. And then... What are the emotions or mindset you need to embody in order to rise higher, pile three? Okay. Four, seven, number eight is faith. And it says your next step towards success. So what is your next step towards success? What is your next step towards success? Okay. And then, let's see, four, that's eight. Okay, so the last one we're pulling is the result of fully owning your magic, creating, or I'm sorry, using your soul gifts and fulfilling your highest potential. Okay, so what is the result of you fully owning your magic, using your soul gifts, and fulfilling your highest potential? Okay, and let's get our final tarot. The result of fully owning your magic, using your soul gifts, and fulfilling your highest potential. Okay, so now all of our cards are out. We're going to do a little timestamp for those people that didn't want to watch this process. So here we are, pile three. These are all of the cards that we're going to be looking at today. We have an oracle, a tarot for each one. And so in the first position here, we have truth. And it says your soul gifts and your purpose in this lifetime. So let's see what that is. Friendship. It says seek out your soul family. Surround yourself with positive people. Spend more time socializing. Okay, so your purpose in this lifetime, which I can see, is to find your soul family. 
Surround yourself with positive people and spend more time socializing, networking, meeting, connect, and connecting with people. And then we have temperance. And I'm seeing this temperance card as your soul gift, okay, which is a beautiful gift. The temperance card is a card of patience, of balance, of harmony, of transmutation. This is a process of alchemy, you being the alchemist, which means that you are, your soul gift is to transmute energies, okay? Negative lower vibrational energies, you have the ability or learning to step into that power of being able to transmute energies. Okay, which is beautiful. Okay, so in the second position, we have illusion and it says the elements that limit you from reaching your divine potential. Okay, so this is what is limiting you. Discernment. And it says all is not what it seems. Stay true to your knowing keep your dreams a secret. Okay. So this is something that is limiting you from your potential, which means that you need to learn to be more discerning, right? Getting caught up in an illusion of love or, uh, something that's going to provide stability for you or something that's good for you. You can be caught up in an illusion of that, right? Not seeing the full picture or, not or missing the red flags or, you know, um, something that we know is not good for us, whether it be a, a way of thinking, a way of doing or a certain person in our life. And we know, we feel it, we know it's not good for us. So this is teaching you or something you're needing to learn here as something that's limiting you from your potential is to be more discerning, right? Really learn to trust your intuition and how it's guiding you, right? Stay true to your knowing is what this is saying. And then we have the Celtic owl here, the hanged man. The hanged man is about a shift of perspective, right? So it could be that if you, if your perspective is limiting you, the way that you see things, the way that you look at things, your perspective can be hindering your progress, hindering your growth. So it can be a need for you to kind of take a step back sometimes from certain situations to allow yourself to open up to other perspectives so that you are able to see through illusion right? All is not what it seems. That could be, you know, uh, all that glitters is not gold. You know, we get caught into certain situations because they might seem like they're good on the surface, but then once we really kind of get into it, it's not what it's, you know, it's not what it, we thought it was going to be, right? We get caught up or sucked into certain ways of thinking or situations and it's just like, and now we're stuck, right? So it's being more discerning and being open to changing or shifting your perspective in the way that you look at things, or maybe a time for you to just kind of take a pause, take a time out, right? And really be honest with yourself about what messages are coming in and what your intuition is really telling you. So that being a limitation that we need to work on here. So in the third position here, we have fear, and this is an area you have resistance to or a reluctance to face. Okay, resistance or reluctance for you to face this, whether it's about yourself or about a current situation, your strength. And it says this challenge will make you stronger. You will get through to the other side. Look for the gifts in the situation. Okay, so maybe a reluctance to, mm, I feel like finding out how strong you are, maybe tapping into your strength in a way that you may be afraid. You may live in a place of fear, afraid to step into your power, afraid to take control of a situation, afraid of making powerful choices or moves or decisions. Okay. And then we have the nine of wands energy here. The nine of wands is when we have been, I mean, it's kind of like the wounded warrior, the nine of wands. We've gone through a lot with this card. We've been through a lot. We've put extended a lot of our energy outwards and we can be at that point where we're feeling fatigued, drained, tired, want to give up. And the nine of wands card is about us not giving up, not giving up on yourself. It's also recognizing how resilient you really are, right? How resilient you are. The nine of wands is also about you learning to step outside of your comfort zone. Okay. With strength. Okay, so that could be something that you need to face with inside of yourself or that you are resistant to, right? When you're being met with challenge, you may feel like, oh, just forget it. I'm not going to do it. It's too hard. I'm too afraid. I'm too afraid of change. I'm too scared of this. I'm scared of that, right? This is you learning how to step into 
your inner strength, getting things in line and balance here. So this fourth card here is about wisdom. This is what you need to learn, heal or release before elevating higher into your power, joy and prosperity. Okay, so what you need to learn, heal and release growth. It says, seek out a mentor or a guide. Take baby steps as you grow. Be willing to learn from others. Okay? Sometimes we can get super, um, what is that word called? When we don't want to listen to other people, right? When we're just like, we think we know best. And even though our life is kind of flipped upside down, it's like we're not listening. We're not, we're not being open to other perspectives. That's part of your blockage here, your limitation is perspective, right? So if someone's giving you advice, sometimes, you know, it could be spirit working through that person to give you what you need to hear, to deliver that message to you. Stubborn is the word that I was looking for. We can be stubborn, right? Someone says something to us and we're like, okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be quiet. I don't want to hear you right now. Um, I'm not going to pay attention to what you're saying, but it's like, let that sink in. You know, be open to other perspectives here so that you you are able to grow, right? And maybe for some of you, it is getting a mentor, a guide, um, someone that's going to help you, right? Whether that's someone that you look up to, it could be, uh, you know, a friend that's doing really well in their life or a family member that's doing really well. And you just say, hey, you know what? I need a little bit of support right now. I need some opinions. I need some feedback. You know, uh, you know what, can, what, what advice can you offer at this time? And be open to that. Doesn't mean that you have to follow it to a T, but be open to a different perspective. Okay, so let's see. We've got the Four of Swords energy here. So this is part of what you need to learn, heal, or release. The Four of Swords is a state of mindfulness, calm, centered, stable mind. So maybe this is you learning in a way how to... Um, be at peace. Let the mind have a rest. Maybe learning to meditate or learning how to bring calmness and stillness into yourself. And this makes me feel, for some of you, it could be like living in fight or flight. And that's all you know how to do, right? Is kind of feeling uh, constantly scared, afraid, um, limited in some way. And this could be learning how to release those emotions and those feelings and those thoughts so that you finally feel at peace okay what you're also needing to release or heal here i'm seeing with the growth um this is almost i'm feeling for some because i'm seeing this this little baby unicorn here and a parent unicorn which kind of looks could be a grandparent <laughs> um but i'm kind of seeing this in a way that there is a part of you that needs nurturing kind of like the inner child here for some of you this to me with the growth here is all about all so about maturity to me, you know, and that could be mental, emotional maturity, especially with the four of swords energy here being more mental. So mentally maturing, you know, some of you I'm kind of getting here, you could have gone through some type of trauma very early on, or have a very wounded inner child. And it's kind of like, you know, when we go through that trauma, there can be something that affects our development, something that affects our mind, something that affects our growth. So some of you could be needing to really nurture that inner child in a sense for what they have gone through and honoring those feelings and emotions to kind of help uplift in a sense or nurture your inner child to let them know that they're safe, they're loved. Um, this can be for some of you even reparenting, okay? The self or reparenting your inner child to let them know they are safe and they're loved. Okay, so yeah, I'm kind of getting this as an immaturity potentially for some of you surrounding the mindset. Um, and it could be because of certain traumas. Okay, it, it does something to our development, especially during our early formative years, emotionally, um, things that are there. And so that may be something also for some of you that are needing to look through. So that's a very specific message for some of you. Okay, so before you're able to <clears throat> elevate higher, as, as allowing yourself to grow out of certain coping mechanisms or out of certain patterns of behaviors, okay? I'm even hearing from spirit learned helplessness, you know, um, not being able to help the self. Like you may have been something that was ancestral or 
generational where you have family member after family member who just kind of moves into this very helpless energy like victim mentality and cannot get yourself out of it you know through certain things that you may have gone through so growth expansion is what i'm seeing here um number five is courage and it says overcome this obstacle in order to move forward so let's see what your obstacle is sanctuary and it says take time out from the world spend more time alone meditate or go on a retreat okay so if this is an obstacle uh, and i'm kind of seeing this a couple different ways because some of you need to to take time out from the world, away from others, and just to be with yourself, okay? Meditating, more time to rest, more time to go on vacation, or just, you know, just feeling into your own energies here without the other people kind of occupying your space. I understand if you have, like, a family and things like that. Make some time for yourself. Self-care. Let me see what the tarot is first. The Ace of Swords. Okay. So I feel like maybe for some of you, I was going to say that maybe for some of you, if it's staying alone too, too much by yourself, that can also be not so great either, because then you might feel like, um, I mean, you know, some people love me. I love being alone. You know, I love being alone. I don't really have many friends, just my tarot friends on YouTube or through social media, but you know, I have my family, but I don't have very many friends, you know? I'm not sad about it, but, um, and I, I, you know, acknowledge the friendships that I've had in the past that are now gone because they were very toxic, but I like being by myself. You know, I do like spending time. I'm an, I'm an empath. So I, alone time for me is, is, is fun. It's like I recharge in this because when I'm out and about around people, around crowds, it takes everything out of me. It makes me feel very drained, you know, being around certain friends, certain family members, certain spaces, it just like drains me so much. Um, and I have to just be away, you know, just for a second, just leave me alone for me, <laughs> just a second, I need to process all of this energy that I'm feeling. So um, yeah, take time out from the world, spend more time alone, meditate or go on a retreat. So maybe for some of you, it is needing to spend more time. And I feel like the time that you're spending is is that you're actually working on yourself, you know, reflecting, introspection, journaling, writing, doing something creative uh, for yourself, right? The mind is being occupied in a way that's conducive to your healing or to something that you're doing for you, okay? But I feel like it's also through that space, you have the Ace of Swords energy here, which is clarity. It's a breakthrough. It's the light bulb moment in life where we can finally see through illusion, right? So I feel like that's where you're going to find answers. That's where you're going to find truth is in that time and that space that you spend by yourself, right? Without the noise of the outside world, without social media, without people, you know, around you. Just spend time for you. That may be an obstacle is to balance out your schedule. Make more time for you, okay? So number six, right? Four, five, six... We have love and it says the support that is required to transcend obstacles or limitations on your journey. So let's see what this, the support that's required, expansion. And it says spread your wings and soar, share your message and shine your light, show the world what you're made of. Okay. So I'm feeling a sense of autonomy here, a sense of autonomy, independence. Okay. Autonomy and independence. What else? It almost feels like the support that you need. I feel like sometimes it's just to be left alone in a way that you need to, so you can figure things out. Sometimes, yes, we need support. We, you have friendship here. And we have the moon. Okay. Hmm. Now, the moon can bring in a lot of fears, a lot of confusion, a lot of clouded judgment, hmm, a lot of uh, insecurities, irrational fears. Uh, it can be create illusion, deception, us not seeing things clearly. The moon is our subconscious mind. The moon is also where we have all of our repressed feelings and emotions that are there, right? 
kind of hidden beneath the surface that can manifest into our life as certain limitations, right? Those irrational fears that we have that are at the back of our mind, maybe from childhood for some of you or from even past situations, they're there lurking <laughs> in the darkness of the subconscious mind. And they manifest, right, at, at times when we don't want them to. And we, they affect us in ways that we don't even re recognize sometimes. So let me think about this. Um, the support that's required to transcend obstacles or limitations on your journey. The support that's required. Uh, this makes me feel, because I'm seeing this little person on an island over here, which looks like. A little person in Ireland over there. I'm feeling for some of you just intuitively, like, don't be afraid to ask for help. Okay, especially when you're feeling confused. I'm feeling, yes, there is a time for you to spend time alone to spread your wings and fly, in a sense, like this unicorn here. But I feel like it is in that space where you're left alone to just reflect and be with you, be with yourself, is where your best thinking comes in is where the clarity comes in for you, where you're able to then acknowledge and recognize where you may have kept yourself stuck in, in an illusion. And I'm also feeling as a supportive energy here, the moon is feminine. Okay, it is feminine energy. So the support I feel like that you need, maybe this is you connecting into your higher self, you're connecting into your ancestors, spirit guides, God, universe, you know. Let's see what else. But yeah, I'm feeling that there's a, a big part of you that's needing to just kind of spend some time with you, spend some time in solitude. And if especially if you're someone who goes from, mm, I'm feeling kind of codependency here. Those of you that are working on your codependency is just learning to just be alone and be with you and with yourself and with your feelings and with your emotions because... Sometimes p being super busy, we can forget a lot of the stuff that we, that needs healing, right? Because it's at the back of our mind. It's out of, out of sight, out of mind, right? If we're focused on somebody else's stuff, all this other stuff that's going on in life, we've got all of this stuff to unpack here, right? That's still there. It's still lingering. It's still waiting for us to acknowledge that it's there for us to heal and release. Okay, so let's see. Four six, seven, um, we have power and it says the emotions or the mindset that you need to embody in order to rise higher. Okay. Balance. It says, take time to relax, indulge a little more or less set boundaries with your work. Okay. So yeah, maybe for some of you, it's a need for you to create more balance within your work life, professional life, personal life, family life, to kind of bring order um, to things here. So the emotions of the minds that you need to embody in order to rise higher is more balance in your life. More time for you as well. We have Ma'at with justice. Crazy, because the justice card is also about balance. Which is beautiful. Justice is also about doing the right thing. Making the right decisions for your highest good. Because justice is all about cause and effect. Right? Sometimes we make a certain decision and it leads to unfavorable circumstances for us. So justice is about you living in a place of your soul's truth. And about choosing the right choice for you. Ultimately. Ultimately. And I, well, the way that I like to say this is think about when you're finding yourself in a place where you have a decision to make, would your higher self tell you that this choice, whatever it is, is the best possible decision you can make for yourself? Okay. Would your higher self tell you Yes, you should do this. Or no, you should not do that, right? So justice is all about balance, karmic balance, and about us weighing our options with things, right? So yeah, the mindset, the emotions that you need to embody here to rise higher is to you to keep your life in balance, in alignment, and to always choose what you know is going to be the best 
possible decision for your highest good, one that your higher self would say, yes, absolutely yes, this is what you're meant to do. Okay, so number eight, we have faith, and it says your next step towards success. Rebirth. I love this. Reinvent yourself. Give life to your dreams. Create a new reality. Okay, that is your next step towards success is you going through a rebirth process, reinventing yourself, giving life to your dreams, which means you're taking action here. Create a new reality for yourself, right? Especially if you don't really like the one that you're living in right now. Make the changes that are necessary. Okay, become this new version. Step into this new version of self. Right? Create a new story. Write a new story for yourself. Four of Pentacles. <laughs> okay, another pile got this card too. And I love this because this is perfect for explaining this. Okay, the Four of Pentacles is about, uh, it is a balanced energy. Okay, the fours in the tarot are about balance, a firm foundation. But the Four of Pentacles can also be about when we are clinging onto something so tight we're afraid of loss. We're afraid to let go. And this can be the comfort zone. It can be a person. It can be a situation that we are refusing to let go of. It can even be a certain part of ourself, an aspect, a, a self-limiting belief that we're holding on to, right? We're afraid to step into this new version of self, okay? Afraid of losing those old parts of the self. So we hold on to them because they've kept us safe for all these years that we've been alive, right? We've lived in fear our whole life, or we've lived with a limited uh, men, a mindset, right? Self-limiting beliefs. We've lived with self-sabotage. We've lived with the inner child traumas or the, you know, pains or other traumas or experiences we've gone through and we've held on to those and those have become our identity, right? So the four of pentacles, if you notice, there's a little beautiful treasure chest here blocking this path, Okay. So the way that I told the other pile with this, especially with the rebirth here, is look inside that chest for yourself in a sense that you're symbolically looking at all of these things that you're holding on to right now that you need to release, right? And that could be, let's just say the self, the many beliefs. Let's let go of the trauma. Let's go let, let go of the inner child stuff that's going on. Let's let go of the fear. Let's let go of the doubt. Let's go of the not trusting the self or the intuition. Let's go of this person or this situation that's not healthy for us, not good for us, right? So that we can clear the way, clear the path, right? Um, be afraid or not be afraid any longer of taking risks in life, of stepping outside of the comfort zone, of doing something different to change your life, okay? The Four of Pentacles, we can become very complacent here, you know, and feel like, you know what, I, I just don't have the energy to change anything in my life. I'm not happy with it, but I'm not taking any action to do anything about it, right? This is Spirit saying, reinvent yourself. Your next step towards success is you looking through your chest in there, getting the stuff throwing it out, getting rid of it, clearing the clutter, and opening up that path for yourself. Don't be afraid to let go of someone, of something, to start new, to start over. Okay? Your last card that we have here for your reading today is light. And it says, this is the result of fully owning your magic, using your soul gifts, and fulfilling your highest potential freedom. I love it. Live wild and free. Choose your freedom. Claim your independence. Okay. And then we have the five of swords. And guess what this is, you guys, pile three. This is freedom from self-sabotage. Freedom from all of those intrusive thoughts that make you feel small, that keep you stuck, that keep you trapped, that you know, you're removing your freedom from situations, people, arguments, fighting, disagreements, drama, um, all of the internal negative uh, dialogue that you have with inside of yourself. Freedom from those thoughts of the mind, right? Freedom from self-sabotaging actions, words, situations, the feeling of defeat, 
right? Of I'm defeated by life and there's nothing that I can do to change it. You have freedom from that. When you fully step into your magic, your soul gifts, and full, this is you fulfilling your highest potential, freedom. Freedom for your soul. No longer living in this place of restriction, okay? We have growth here. I love this. Beautiful. Okay, so that is all that I have for you. Pile number three. I do hope this reading was helpful for you guys. I hope you guys found it somewhat fun, a lot of fun. I had fun doing it. This was something different. I feel like I might do more of these in the future. Um, but um, yeah, if you chose a different pile, I will see you there. But other than that, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed the rest of your day and I will see you in the next reading.